Hey guys, Chip here, and uh, today I just want to show you a preview of some of the stuff that I've been working on, as well as give you a freebie for those Patreon subscribers. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. So you guys are familiar with the PBR textures. Here we have polyhaven, and then we have this plank flooring. I'm grabbing a 2K version of it. I've loaded in into KitOps, and I'm going to add the material on there. And if we look at it, you'll see that it comes in just like this. I've had this value right here. And, and I turned off displacement because displacement can kind of work, but it doesn't really work that well. So I've just basically turned that off. If I want to, I'm going to change the values to 0 0.2 here. So that means it's scale. Oh, I've also added this. I've changed the blending to box mode, right? So that means that it maps it from all six directions at once. And what that really means is that it doesn't project it from the top on down or use the UVs. And in this particular case, this object, you know, we don't have UVs for it. So. This is what it looks like, and this is in EV. If we go into cycles, you see that's what it looks like in cycles. Let's go back into our LipTF mode. I'm going to show you this new product I've been working on, and it's called Ultramat. I'm going to grab this box next to this one and load Fuse, find that actual file I downloaded. It's my downloads, it's plant flooring. I'm going to just grab the diffuse, actually, let's share the diffuse. So that loads one image. If I go to four textures and load it, I can grab all four of them intelligently. Let's, let's, build it. let's call it plank dash four dash ultra. We can come down here now and I can create material. So I've created a material called plank four ultra. So look in here, you can see I'll have this plank four ultra right here. So when I drop it in there, it's a brand new material and it's got a lot of cool features to it. But first let's set that up to be the same scale as we have it. I have a floor rotation and a wall rotation. So this is full triplanar. Now I'll explain that to you in a second, but let's just go in and look at this floor rotation and we'll change it to 90. And then we can look at this. As we look at this, we see we have the exact same PBR. So we can actually use this tool that I've created to create just a PBR with all these different settings that we can do to it. One of the really cool things that Blender 5 has are these menu switches. If I want to use that one map, I'll click over here. I can edit the color. I can turn on displacement. I can have this whole wear and scratches. So this has got scratches and altitude dirt and AO dirt and all kinds of stuff in here. I don't have to burden the GPU with how heavy this texture is with all these features because they're all turned off. And because of Blender 5.0 being able to bypass that, it's a very lightweight texture, even with four images on it. So let's talk a little bit about triplanar, why that's really cool. Oh, by the way, if you ever want to edit one of these images, if I go to diffuse, I just double click on it. You can see that there's our plant floor and diffuse right there. So that's what that does. What does triplanar do for me? If I want to move these, but match them up with this, I can go over here and triplanar and I make that zero and now they'll match up, right? Or I can actually make them on the floor. I can rotate them like this much. And then on this side, I can go back the other direction. So I can get different kinds of mappings. If I say zero here and I go the wall rotation 90, it's going to move that this way. So you can see that's how that works. You control every feature of how this thing rotates using the floor and wall rotation, which is great, especially for things like woods or things that have aspect ratio to them. Now, the other thing I'll mention is that we have something called Veron wall. Let's talk about that for a second. I'm going to grab a new diffuse texture of this concrete patchy. So I'm going to grab that. Let's that back out of that. Right now, because I've got this set to a scale of 0.2, you don't see any tiling. But if I add a 2, drop it just a little bit so you can see it. So now you can see that, yeah, we have recognizable tiling here, very recognizable. And if I check up the contrast, you'll see these numbers, value 1, contrast 0, these are the defaults. So if you ever want to get back to the default, you can do that easily. You can see we have recognizable contrast here. But if I go to our Veroni on right here, You'll see that now we have turned the tiling off on this. It's difficult to see it. I can change the scale of this if I want to adjust it. You can see that it's done a pretty good job of getting rid of the tiling. I have this other one, which is a dirt tiling map. I can take this and it's going to give us a color we can use. I'm going to take this noise color and let's make it, let's make it something like a color we can see. There's a scale and here's the strength. You can kind of see what happens. There, there's a good strength. We can change that color to this color. We're doing a pretty good job of getting the tiling all off of this. If I turn it off again, this stuff basically goes back. I also have this ability to do X, Y mirror. Now what is important? Well, let's go in and let's open up a, a texture file. Let me find one here. Let's just go to wood. 
So pick something like this. You can see that let's tap out of that. And we're going to go back. We need to change these back to what we had them at and they're original. So one zero. And now you can see that we have this very repeatable texture. Even if we want to scale it down, it's still pretty repeatable, right? We can offset it some if we want to in the X and Y, but we still have repeatable. But if I get something like this, I can hit this mirror on, and now you can see that it's not so repeatable anymore. It's basically mirroring the texture. So I can do that and scale it a little bit, and I can get something that's going to actually work fairly decently. So that's just another example of one of the features that we have here. So I'm going to turn this back off. I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to load up our blank flooring. Let's get back out of here. Okay, so now we have this. Let's go back and set our scale and our rotation, lighting is exact same, everything's the same, right? If I wanna, by the way, if I wanna jump up rough, if I wanna mess with roughness and height and all that, I can do that here in PBR adjustments. If I wanna change the roughness, I can multiply it, which, which is gonna make it even rougher, or I can divide it, which makes it shinier, you can see. And adding it, is going to also make it rougher too. Subtracting is going to make it shinier. So you can kind of see how that works. So again, we have these defaults. If you're trying to change it a lot, use the multiply. If you're trying to fine tune it, use the add. That's kind of the, the way that typically works. So now this is done. I'm going to select this and select this, and I'll go into my materials and I'll say copy material selected. So now I have this one over here, which is great. Now I'm just going to use one texture. We'll go plank four. We'll call this one plank one ultra and we'll say create material and we'll come over here and i'll just say plank one ultra and there's our material we need to set the scale to point two and the rotation to 90. now when we look at this remember we only have one material and that's the diffuse material we're only using the diffuse material to generate everything here so it's not the same let's take a look and figure out how we can make it almost exactly the same we have four different textures in here for 2K textures, and I want to replicate this exact same material with one 2K texture. So first I'm going to come in here with Node Wrangler on. You typically use Node Wrangler for this kind of thing. I'm going to go into my roughness map, hold Control and the Shift and click one time. That shows me the roughness. If I want, I can go over to those PBR adjustments and hit Control and Shift one time, and that shows the roughness right there. It's not the same, and we want it to be the same. So I'm going to come over here to this Generate PBR from Diffuse, and I'm going to click Control Shift. This is where I want to be. I want this line to go all the way to the material output. So again, we're using Node Wrangler, Control Shift to do that. And I want to get out of it. I just come back over here, Control Shift, click here. So I'm going to go over here. There's my roughness. And I'm going to start with the roughness max. So I'm going to just move that down a little bit and the men around. And I'm going to move these a little bit so I can figure out what I have. Now, if you notice, the black is dark and the lights are dark. So I'm going to hit this invert. And I'll go back into roughness and do the same thing again, move these around till I get it. What I'm looking for here is the most contrast. I'm not trying to match the color yet. Once I've got that done, I'll come over here and say control shift click here. Remember, I'll do this one time. Now we're getting the roughness from the PBR adjustments. I can multiply this. And if I multiply it higher, I'm going to raise it. And if I add it, I'm going to raise it too. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to play with this to get it to actually get where it looks pretty close to what we have over here. Oops, if you can tell, our invert was flipped around on us. So let's go back and look at that. Actually, let's go back. Here's roughness. There we have it right there. We want a high contrast here. So we have the lights like that. Now we go over here and control shift click here and go to roughness. And you can see that we're close to the same, but I can just adjust this multiply number up a little bit and the add number up a little bit. And that's pretty good right there. So now, I'm going to disconnect my normal map because I don't want to see that right now. I can control alt and right drag through it. That disconnects the same thing. I'm going to come back here and click here, select that, come over here, click here, select that. Now we can look at this. We know that these two are the same, but these two look pretty good. Although we have the normal map on here. So let's just disconnect the normal map here too. There we go. So now we can compare apples to apples and you can see that's pretty much the same, right? So next we want to do the normal, the height map. So the height map is a little different because we don't have a normal map to edit. But what I'm going to do is I'll come over here and I hit once, that's the roughness, and hit twice, that's the height map, right? So 
All I need to do is the same exact thing. I want to adjust this. Notice that the blacks are low and lights are high. I just want a decent contrast here. So I have a little dynamic range to work with. That's perfect. Then I come over here and turn this on and that one on. Oh, where do you have that one? That normal is already turned on. Now we're going to try and match these. You can see that as I look at these, there's a lot more texture here. So I'll come in here to this PBR adjustments. This is the height. And so I can actually adjust it right here, the normal. So I'm going to set this to about 0.5 or something like this and the distance, something like that. And now as I run across the, you know, get some reflections running across it, maybe I'll come down a little bit smaller in height strength. There we go. And now I have almost exactly the same material that I got over here. Now, what that's good for is that now I can do all kinds of interesting things, right? Well, now I can come over here and I can do things like if I want to colorize it, I can turn color on. And remember, I have this value, so I can just adjust the value right here. But I'm going to leave that alone because I'm going to use an overlay. If I want to go for a dark brown color, like a walnut, I can do that as well. So that's a pretty neat way of adjusting it. If you want to change the color, you know, the hue, you can change that hue. One. Remember again, if you look at this, it'll give you the default. So the hue is 0.5, a saturation. So I can jack the value up, make it higher. Let's try it. Three. So you get the idea. I can adjust this. And even in PBR, you still want to adjust these things every now and then. Let's go ahead and turn this off. I want to show you something really cool. Let's take a look at this CW wear. And I'm going to turn that on. Now, this is pretty amazing. What this does is it's giving us a metallic wear with some scratches on it, right? So I've got scratches. I zoom in. You can see we got scratches on here. I can adjust the, the, how big the scratches are on the wear, but I don't want it to be metallic. I want it to be wood. I certainly don't want it to be white. I want to grab one of these light colors. I don't want the bevel. The bevel was probably okay, but I would like the amount to be a little higher. Maybe we'll grab one. I'll play with these numbers, jack the roughness up a little bit because this is a rough area. I don't know what to call it. I can say the bevel width. I have bevel damage. So if I want to add more or less damage, I can add that. You can start to see that that's what's going on here. Now I'm going to turn on the dirt. When I turn on dirt, you see dirt gets added to the whole thing. Now we have look, look, this, this dirt is bumpy with dirt and we can adjust the amount of it from zero or just a little bit. I can add a little bit. It congregates in the crevices, which you want it to do. It doesn't congregate on the outside, which, you, you know, you wouldn't have, you know, any dirt hitting on the outside. You just have wear on the outside. And then we have this thing called height. So I can go into the height of this as well. A lot of times dirt comes from the floor. So if I do this, you'll see that I'm starting to add height to this. Let's make it pink or something. And now you can see that there's the height. There, there's the level, the spread. And this is the fall off. So the spread is going to give you how much the fall off you're using. Then you can come back in here and sample a good dark color. And now you've got dirt height in there, right? Some pretty good dirt on the bottom up here. If I go even higher, you start to see pretty good dirt showing up on the bottom. You can you know, always just adjust the spread and everything so you can get it to look better. So anyway, that's really it. Once this is done, you can go in here and save the selection to KPAX or save the material any way you want. If I go over to Kit Ops, I'm in this PBR test one. Whichever one I'm in right here, and I'll say save it to the KPAX. It's going to take a while because it's going to do a little rendering of the material. So once it's done, I'll save that one. It's taking longer because I've got all these shaders. It's got to compile to create the rendering. It's done. Let's go do this same thing. Let's save this one. This will go a lot faster because we don't have all these extra shaders involved. Now I'll go back over to KitOps. I'll go to KitOps here and we see we have these planks for ultra. Oh, this is a, yeah, this is that one. I already have one in here, but this is the new one. If I want to get rid of this, I just go under here and say tools, scroll down, open KPAC directory, and that'll pop up. Here are my planks. If I want to get rid of the old ones, let's get rid of those. Come back into here, into KitOps, refresh. And once you refresh, you'll see we only have the ones we have. This is the ultra, this is for one, this is four, and this is the flooring. That's really the tool. I'm going to put a copy of the add-on up on my $2 Patreon. You can grab it if you want and build your own. You can get all these free PBRs, build your own PBR sets if you want. I'm going to be updating my EV materials. 
This will end up going with my EV Plus Cycles material system. So if you buy that or you already own that, you'll get this as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry it took 15 minutes, but I think it was worth it. There's a lot of really cool stuff here that based on all the years of work I've put in on creating, you know, one shader to rule them all and everything else. I think this one does the absolute best job of, of any of them. And it's so compact and memory efficient. So I like that too. Thanks for watching. See you online. Bye.